Smartphones may be more advanced than ever, but equally their battery life is as short as ever. Apple devices do but that trend however. They have great battery life, but there's always more we can eke out of them. I'm Rob Wilson, you're watching the Video Gadgets Journal and this is 25 battery saving tips for your iPhone and iPad. If you say the phrase, hey Siri, and this screen appears, it means that your iPhone is always listening to your voice waiting for that phrase to be said so it launches the Siri application and that uses battery. To turn this feature off go to settings then scroll down to Siri and turn off the allow hey Siri toggle so now when you say hey Siri nothing will happen. A common myth is that if you go into your task manager and get rid of applications this will actually save you battery. According to Apple engineers that's not actually the case and it's more stress to actually relaunch the application. So if you can, avoid closing down applications to save battery. Sounds a bit counterproductive but that's what they tell us. Whenever you see this little compass icon in the top right hand corner of your device that means it's using location services and that uses up a lot of battery. Obviously some applications are really handy for it such as maps but others you can decide whether or not you really want it. To do that go to settings and then in settings scroll down to privacy then tap on location services and this will show you all the applications that use the location services. For example, do you need Flixster, a movie app to use your location? Possibly not, so you can take it to never. Another thing you'll want to check out in location services is at the bottom we have system services and then towards the bottom of this screen we have product improvement. This is sending your location to Apple to improve its products but it uses location services which uses battery. So if you don't want to send them any information, simply turn them all off. Applications that may refresh themselves in the background but you can change this. To do it, go to settings, then general and then background app refresh. You can turn everything off if you want but that might be a bit dramatic as you might not get notifications and updates that you really want so you may want to go through each application individually. For example do you need Wikipedia to refresh in the background? Probably not so you can turn that off. In the general settings there is an option called hand off and what this does is hand off tasks to other devices through your iCloud account but if you don't have a Mac or other iOS devices then you're not going to need it so you can turn it off. This may be a tough one for some of you to swallow but the Facebook application is a huge battery hog. If you use it quite a lot it can take up to 20% of your battery. So if you can afford to use it Facebook from Safari as it uses a lot less battery and the interface is very similar to the application. That's one though I accept you may not want to do. That live wallpaper you like to long press on to animate, I'm afraid that uses battery. So if you're going to change that, make sure you put it to a still and also turn off perspective. That makes the screen move about a little bit when you adjust the angle of your phone. And of course that uses up a little battery as well. So set it to a still picture to save a little bit of battery. If you never use the spotlight search on your iOS device then you might as well turn it off because what happens is that in the background it's always indexing data so that uses up a bit of battery. Go to general settings, spotlight search and turn everything off so it stops doing it. If you're not too fussed about storing data in the cloud, well iCloud does a lot of that using up battery so go to settings, iCloud, there's plenty of options here to turn off mail, contact, calendar backups and if you go into iCloud Drive there's also more options for turning off backups, turn it all off and it'll save battery but obviously you'd run the risk of losing all your data in a catastrophic event. The native mail, contact and calendar applications like to sync a lot and that uses data which uses battery. In order to make this a manual process you can go to settings then tap on any of the three applications then on accounts and you will see here there is a fetch new data option. If you tap here you can turn off push and then you can get it to fetch the data either every 15 minutes, 30 minutes, hourly or manually and that will save you a bit of data because it's not trying to fetch this data all the time. Put less graphical stress on your iPhone, go to settings, then general, accessibility and scroll down to reduce motion and toggle reduce motion on. That will make things look a little plainer, you won't get as many smooth graphical movements but it is a little less battery usage. 
Whenever you receive a notification that turns on the screen, makes a noise and vibrates the device, all of which uses battery. So you can individually go through each application and check whether or not you want notifications for them. To do this, go to settings, then notifications. You can scroll down each of the applications installed on your device. For example, if I tap on BBC, I can then turn off applications by toggling the allow notifications tab. So now that will not bother me and waste battery iTunes and the App Store download content in the background without you knowing, but that uses up battery. If you want to turn it off and do these updates manually, you can go to Settings, then scroll down to iTunes and the App Store and toggle off Music, Apps, Books and Updates. That means that you have to go into the App Store application in order to do these downloads, so it doesn't do it automatically. If your mobile phone tariff only allows you to use 3G, then there's no point in having 4G or LTE turned on. So you can turn this off by going to Settings, Cellular, then Cellular Data Options, and then Enable LTE. You can turn that off. A couple of obvious battery saving options can be accessed from the control center. If you're traveling and have no access to Wi-Fi, you might as well turn that off. And if you don't use Bluetooth devices, you can also turn that off. And just bear in mind, usually when there is an iOS update, it automatically turns Bluetooth on. So just check whether it's on or off if you don't even use it. If you do use Bluetooth, there is still a small battery gain to be had by making sure that you turn off AirDrop if you're not going to use it. One of the biggest battery hogs on your iPhone is of course your display. So you can turn down the display brightness and also turning off auto brightness and keeping it at an acceptable level will mean that you save quite a lot of battery. There are two more battery saving options you can look at in display and brightness. The first is auto lock. This determines how long the screen remains on and your device unlocked when you're not using it. Obviously, if you put it down to 30 seconds, that's going to lock it quite quickly and save you battery. The second option is raise to wake. This is where when the device is locked, you pick up the device. It shows you notifications and other things on screen. It has to turn on the screen to do that. So if you turn it off, that will save you battery. But of course, you have to unlock your device or press the power button to see your notifications. Obviously, it goes without saying that these speakers use battery, so put them down to an acceptable level when you can. Try using the headphones because that will kill the speakers, so you don't have to use a the battery there. And also, if you go down to the music settings and make sure that the equalizer is turned off because that uses extra battery as well. There's a couple of small battery gains you can get from sound and haptic settings as well. For example, do you need it to vibrate when it's ringing? And also you can turn off keyboard clicks and lock sounds. Again, tiny increments in battery saving, but it all adds up. When your battery hits 20%, you will have a low battery option. Obviously, you want to use it if it does become available. If you want to use it whenever you want, you can go to settings and general settings, go to a battery and then turn off the low power mode and that's available whenever it just warns you when you get to 20%. It should also be noted that the battery screen has a wealth of information about what applications are using up your battery as well. If you scroll down to battery usage, it gives you a breakdown of each application's percentage use of your battery. You can tap on the clock icon to the right, which will tell you how many minutes each application has been using your battery, and you can divide it up by the last 24 hours or the last seven days. So if you find that something in particular is taking up a lot of battery, then you can either decide to use the application less or uninstall it. Obviously, in my example, I've been showing you plenty of things in the settings screen, so that's been using up all my battery. If you ever find your battery acting oddly, say it goes from 20% to 5% very quickly, that means that the battery probably isn't calibrated properly. In order to fix this, let the battery drain to 0% so the device turns off, and then recharge it back up to 100% without touching it, and that should recalibrate your battery and give you a better reading when you're using it. And all that filming has pretty much ruined the battery of my iPhone 7. I guess I'll have to put it on charge and follow my own tips in this video. Now if this has whetted your appetite for iPhone tips, then you might want to sink your teeth into my mammoth iPhone 7 guide, which includes more than 100 tips. And I squeeze it all into just under 30 minutes, so if you want to know more, click on the link on screen now. Otherwise, like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the Video Gadgets channel if you love content like this, and I'll see you again soon. Enjoy the rest of your tech day. Bye for now.